Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Yes, today on one day 127 of the year of vlogging dangerously, I am following up the horror that is Purple Rain with uh, a bit of awesome, and that is Princess Bride. Now, I will preface this by saying Princess Bride is one of my uh, one of those movies that I absolutely love to watch, but honestly, until today, don't recall ever seeing the whole way through in one sitting. So today was a joy. Today much better than yesterday. Um, yeah, but you know why yesterday was not good, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, Princess Bride is a the Rob Reiner classic from 1987 uh, with a cast of names that you may know, you may not. Uh, let's see, we got Carrie Elwes, Manny Patinkin, Chris Anderson, Christopher Guest, my my personal favorite, uh, Wallace Shawn, who is one of those guys who just, you know, He's got that shrill and evil-sounding voice, and he's so grating, but you got to love him. Um, you've got Andre the Giant, amazing in this movie. Uh, you've got Fred Savage, Robert Wright, and uh, Peter Falk, right? And uh, I believe Billy Crystal makes an appearance in this as well. Yes, he does. So you've got so many, so many wonderful people in this movie that um, they're people from when I was a kid. They were big. They were big before I was a kid, and it's great um, to see to see this movie again. And um, they describe it as not your everyday average ho hum fairy tale, and that is very much true. This is a tale of it's true love, but it's not true love in that sappy freaking uh, saccharine um, Hollywoodized crappy romance comedy way. No, no way. This is this is by one definition, it could be considered a romantic comedy, but it's not the the fucking horrible rom com crap that you get today, where it's all about you know, uh, guy treats woman like dirt for ages, and you know, uh, woman finally realizes guy only does it because guy doesn't know how to handle himself, and guy and woman fall in love despite weird stupid circumstances, like guy has. You know, um, a job being a hitman. We'll just say that, yeah. It's not that crap at all. Now, mind you, guy, the 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 true love dynamic is a bit cheesy in a way, and it does a bit. It is it is a bit. Um, there are circumstances, but it's fairy tale circumstances. It's not, you know, crap. You know, this guy's a jerk. Circumstances by any means, and, and this movie's got it all. For everybody who's got a love of anything fantasy at all, it's got fencing, it's got torture, it's got um, evil, evil ma manipulative princes, it's got assassins, it's got pirates, it's got giants, it's it's got a little bit of everything for everyone, and it's it's brought together so well. Um, and it's a, it's the screenplay was written by by uh, William Goldman, who, Goldman, sorry, who wrote the book, which I have yet to read and which. Maybe one day I'll get around to reading, but uh, then also uh, whew, back in, in fact, on the subject of books, which is related, of course, because this is based on a novel. Um, Peter Falk plays an older grandfather in this. Uh, well, an older grandfather. He plays the grandfather of Fred Savage, who is sick, and he brings him a book that his father read him, and he read his father, and now he's reading his grandson. And that's a very good family thing too, and it's a value a value thing. You know, the reading to your children thing is very valuable and an awesomely an awesome um, family lesson in the first place. Uh, it's a lesson in appreciating your family and the way that it plays out with the the son grandson dynamic. Uh, and it adds something to the movie. You would think it's not going to add to the movie. You would think so, but it does. It definitely adds to it, and. Um, there's a line at the very start of, the, of that dialogue, not the very first line, but one of the very early lines, when he says, uh, when he gives the, the 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 Fred Savage character, when he gives the kid a uh, a book, and the kid looks at it and goes, "A book? Is that all?" And he goes, "Oh, well, back when I was a kid, books were TV. You know, that's oh, it's it's fairly ironic considering it's a movie." And likely one of the only ways this this story will endure is going to be as a as a, a film presentation. 
Um, it's ironic. It is, in a way. Um, it's very much, though, a, a classic. It is a, it is a very, it is a classic movie, though. And it's one of those ones that I think will endure for a long time, and there's very good reasons for that. There are. It's full of action. Uh, the sword play in it is wonderfully done. It's, it's without being just the back and forth, back and forth. There's a very creative sword play. There's witty and engaging dialogue throughout. There's, um, it's comedic, it's it's grand, and at the same time it's action-packed, and it's, it's got that, that uh, it's got the kissing stuff in it, you know, it's got that too. So, this is the exact opposite of what I watched yesterday. Yesterday I watched a misogynistic douchebag movie that was, it's the darker predecessor perhaps to the, the rom-coms of today. Um, it would be a dark romantic comedy if it was considered a comedy at all, which you have to consider Purple Rain. Today's is an actual, genuine love story, but with enough stuff thrown into there that's it's it's not saccharine or sappy or you know boring. So there we go, Princess Bride. And uh, will I find a better movie tomorrow? Inconceivable, but we will try. Or we'll find an absolutely worth movie. We'll see. As usual, I've been the Zero Killer. Questions, comments, concerns, or death threats, you know where to put them. Put them in the comment section below. And I will talk to you tomorrow.